Hey, don't click away. Today I'm going to test drive Nissan's Super One Airbag Laminator. What's up everyone? I'm Javi Guzman with Mr. Phone Doctor. Today you're all in for a treat. The team at Nissan was so kind to send me this Nissan One airbag laminator. It is a multi-use machine that can be used to laminate and bubble remove at the same time. Whether you want to laminate flat screens, curved screens, in or out of frame, this machine is supposed to be able to do that all. I am very excited to give this little guy a try and see how well it works. But first, let me go ahead and show you guys some of the details and show you guys the inside of the chamber. If you notice, you can see the inside chamber is very, very small, thus allowing you to get nominal vacuum pressure without having to use such a large four liter vacuum. You can use a smaller size vacuum and smaller size compressors due to this size. Next, let's take a look at some of the settings and presets. You can choose from auto, laminate, and debubble. So that's a really cool thing. If you notice, auto, that's basically gonna be your lamination, and it's also going to be your bubble remove. So it's gonna do the two in one. If you choose laminate, then this option is either gonna give you an option to laminate either a flat screen or a curved screen. And then if you go to debubble, of course, that's gonna be your debubble function. So this machine is pretty much a two in one. You're able to do your lamination and you're also able to do your debubbling, which is really, really cool. Now, another option is if you notice, you can actually see that there's only one pressure regulator knob. Now this pressure knob is going to regulate all of your laminating pressure, okay? So debubble pressure, if you want to change this, have it uh, go at a higher MPA or anything like that. This all needs to be done via your compressor. So this has to be adjusted on your main, main compressor to get your PSI to wherever you wanna do it. Me, I went ahead and set my compressor at 0.5 MPA. So I know the highest MPA that's gonna be pushed into this machine is gonna be 0.5. But overall, very, very uh, user-friendly and simple to use. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys what else it came with. So, the Sun did send us a manual. They also did send us this little silicone pad to place inside here, which I don't use. I just set the screen in there and they sent us another little airbag, which is this one here. So really, really cool. Let's go ahead and begin the test drive to see how well this little guy works. Now I do have several screens that I did want to run the tests on. I have two S10 pluses, an S20 plus, and I also brought in a screen to do in frame. I'm first gonna begin off doing the S10 plus. Now, Nassan recommends that you use these type of foam mats. Basically, you're just going to get your S10 plus screen get it aligned, set it in here, and we're gonna set this in upside down like so. All right, so this looks pretty good. I'll set that there. And we're gonna get our S10 Plus glass. And we like to do manual alignment, okay? So I'm just gonna manually align this glass and OLED. Done a lot of these, so I'm relatively pretty good at getting these aligned properly without any kind of hiccups. So there, we have it manually aligned. We went ahead and hit a little dot right here. And you always want to set the screen in upside down. So we're going to set it here upside down. We need to close this. And always before you close this chamber, just make sure that you have everything all sitting in properly right here. It's not lipping or anything. And as I mentioned to you, it does run on a compressor and a vacuum pump, which I have here. Let's go ahead and select our correct parameter. So for this one, we're going to just hit laminate. Then I found that sometimes you do have to hold this top plate down just so that the vacuum and everything draws and it sucks all everything correctly. Here we go, we heard it. Now you, you'll hear it click. What that click is, it's just these little uh, pins that engage and they basically lock this top chamber down so it can't lift up. There we go, so we had a 25 second laminating time. Laminating has finished. You heard the chamber disengage. So we can open it up. And here we go, here is your finished lamination. So a little bit of bubbling, little more than I would like to see, but you know, it could have been a mold alignment or something. I mean, I just rapidly cut this off. Now that's the thing, I mean, if you do get bubbles, guys, don't get discouraged. It's more than likely just an alignment issue or something with your mold. We'll go ahead and do our debubble. 
55 is normally what we usually do, but there's a lot of bubbles. So typically debubbling time just varies on how, how big the bubbles are that you have. So you can do five, 10, maybe even 12 minutes sometimes. It just depends. Seven minutes and then we'll hit the debubble and then we'll start. So it's gonna start the vacuum, get any air out of there. And then once the vacuum locks in, kicks, and then the compressor starts. There we go. So now it just filled itself up with air and we are at PSI 0.5. And this is gonna go on for about seven minutes. So I'll cut right here and then we'll jump back in as soon as this finishes debubbling. All right, the bubble removing has finished. Let's take a look, see what we're dealing with. Everything looks really, really, really good. Just one minor bubble down here on the bottom left corner. But other than that, I mean, this was a beautiful lamination. Not too bad for giving this a shot for the second time, huh? Let's go ahead and move forward. I want to do a Samsung Galaxy Note 10 Plus in frame. Let's see how well the Super One does with this in frame laminating. And of course, we still want to go face down. Let's go ahead and close the lid. And I am going to just do a laminate only because I, I just, I'm curious. I really want to see how it looks after the in-frame lamination and then we'll do it in a debubble. So we're gonna do laminate only, okay? Let's reveal. Let's see how this looks. Oh, boom. There we have it. And beauty, look at that. Look at that in-frame lamination. No bubbling or anything. Very minimal bubbles down here on the flex, but that's relatively normal. Like I mentioned to you, this is a bad screen, lots of oil spilling, so I'm just doing this all for demonstrating purposes. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, remove this carburetor that we put in here. Then we can go ahead and safely put it back in here and do our bubble remove. So let's go ahead and debubble, start. All right, the bubble removing has finished. Let's take a look at the in-frame lamination. Not bad, not bad. Any bubbles in the corners? One minor one right down in here. But I honestly do think if we put it back in the clave, that'll, that'll go away. So that's not bad at all. So that's it for the in-frame lamination. As you guys see, results were really, really good. But next up, I did want to do the S20 Plus. And for this lamination, I'm going to do the laminate and the bubble. Do the full auto function on this in the sun. So hand alignment, like I said earlier, is what we really recommend you all to learn. Good. We got it pressed and we can use our S20 Plus mold. We'll hit the auto. Start. Still pressing down, engage. I'll wait for the vacuum to kick in, make sure that we have a nice sealed chamber. There it is, laminating pressure, 0.2. So that's a really cool feature. You know, you can basically just run a screen in here, leave it, go do something else. You don't need to worry about taking it out, putting the autoclave, because this guy is gonna basically do everything. All right, bubble removing has finished. Let's take a look, see what we got. And I'm hoping we have a nice, beautiful repair, which is close, very, very, very close to perfect. So there were still a few little bubbles here on the corners, which is common, especially in these 20 series. These bubbles are just very, very stubborn in this series model. Alignment looks perfect, so could have been something with the mold, maybe mold being too big. So I believe we might have had a little bit of overlap. But that's the thing with these, you know, it's just playing with your molds and getting a right adjustment for everything. But for those of you guys out there that do want to manually cut it, my personal advice is going to be just cut it the same size of the OLED. But overall, I mean, I am very, very satisfied with what this machine did. What do you guys think? Leave your comments down below. Let me know. I mean, I really don't consider this as a high industrial type application, you know, for volume size orders. But, you know, for one off repair shops that are doing this. Um, this is a great, great little machine. But then again, you know, you guys got to remember, it's not always in the machine. It's all about your skills and techniques. So just be, be aware of that, okay? This isn't going to work perfectly, especially if you guys are not trained. You don't know how to handle the OLEDs, how to handle the foams. You're going to have a lot, a lot of issues. I really do highly recommend you guys get trained. And if you guys are looking for training, feel free to reach out to us. We have our training video courses online 
or you can also um, come in and visit us in person. So come visit us, let us know if you need anything. And if you guys need any screen replacements, any uh, tech repair advice, uh, visit our Discord. Uh, we just created that. Uh, the, all the links and everything will be down in the description as well as a link to purchase this bad boy if you guys are interested in purchasing it. Surgeon signing out. We'll see you guys in the next episode. Cheers. <laughs>